Hello everybody, my name is Alan Kett. Welcome back to the Museum of Graffiti's Art Talks. Tonight, we are going to be talking about trains and train art and painted subway trains in New York City. And so we're gonna get into a little bit about the history of those trains uh, that we all love and that all, we are all familiar with. But first, I just wanna make a, an announcement. And so for those of you that are joining us every week. Uh, I'm hosting Tuesdays, which is more of an international look uh, at graffiti and style writing. And Brimstone from Miami is hosting Thursdays, which is a talk specifically geared towards Miami history so that we can learn and document this movement in particular where we are located now in Miami. And so uh, just for you guys to know what's going on. Today is very special because we've been noticing a trend for the past few years with trains being painted all over the world, but in specifically in New York City, which is my hometown and where I grew up. And trains are one of the things that I love very much. If you guys know me and know my history, I've painted trains uh, for a very long time and have gotten into lots of uh, trouble for that, uh, but it holds a very dear place in my heart and a very dear place in the history of this movement. And so for those of you that are tuning in, uh, we are gonna talk about all the new stuff that's been happening for the past couple of years, but give you kind of a, a background on the history and sort of uh, how we got here and you know perhaps what's what's next uh the museum of graffiti is an independently owned and run company and so anything that you could do to support us to donate we have badges activated on here tonight which means you could donate a dollar two dollars three dollars whatever you like uh this is an also an open discussion and so i'm checking out the comments but you could also add questions right in the question icon and so I can get you on here and then if anybody that's been painting trains and isn't going to uh, give themselves up or or hurt themselves in any way or or uh, incriminate themselves and want to join on here you could jump on with me and uh, and I'll get you on here so without further ado I'm gonna narrate and talk and we'll go back and forth on the topic uh, and so let's go back in time a little bit because the trains around the world and in particular New York City have been painted since the early 70s and everybody out there might be very much familiar with this as a result of the books that have been published in particular subway art where you would see trains that look like this. And so when you look at these trains in particular, the one above, United Artists by Scene, the train is clean, meaning it's freshly painted. And he was lucky enough to catch this in the train yard. And it was a blank canvas. And so the idea of clean trains is one that's been going on for a long time because the subway authorities, the transit authority in New York City has been trying to maintain clean trains for a long time. But of course, we don't want clean trains. We want painted trains filled with art and burners and throw ups and everything else. And so here's a great example of these works. And you know, the trains were at some point green and Queens and here you see more names on the train uh, is the Wiz is notable and he painted the trains and everybody was into covering these trains with their names because the trains with names and with colors and spray paint were beautiful and otherwise they were just plain boring and so we were all very motivated to paint these trains to watch our names go around the city some did it better than others Lee from the Fabulous Five crew, one of the best to ever do it. Here's an example of one of his early trains. Uh, 
in motion in New York City. You see it says Fabulous Five and it has a Mickey Mouse right in the middle. And so here you see sort of the pinnacle of some of these train paintings, which is a whole car where he paints from one end to the other end of the, of the train car, from the top to the bottom. And here's a really great example of him using the entire space of the train to make a statement. And that statement is Fabulous Five, which was his crew. And of course, in, in this competition to eradicate art from the trains, and I'm gonna call it art because although a lot of people want us to say vandalism or bombing, to me it was really just art. Uh, bear with me for a moment here. Um, it really was art, even though there was some things that some people might not agree were so artistic because it wasn't according to uh, to them the, uh, the type of art that they liked. For us uh, young people that were out there doing it, it was a very important and artistic outlet or writing, you can call it writing, as Zeb is chiming in saying. But whether it's writing or not, it's still art. Writing, I think, is just another way of saying what type of art it was or what type of activity it was. But to me, uh, it's art. And so, you know, people were challenged by it. And so much like, um, you know, we, we define things in a certain way that the authorities wanted it to be art free. Right, and so for me, art free makes it really boring, makes it really stale, and really makes it an issue of control with the uh, the city. And so when we look at these trains that are art free, they're like they're blank canvases to the artists. And so when they went white in the '80s, and when they went white in the '70s, of course, like I mentioned before, they became blank canvases and ready to be painted. As you can see here with this, uh, a detail of this Apache piece by scene. And also pieces like this by Bio. And so in the, in the early 80s, these white elephants, as Great Boxers is mentioning, were the way that the MTA was trying to keep these trains clean. And Bio and Tats crew or TAT crew, uh, which are known, how they're known today, uh, were very much at the forefront of painting these trains. And here you see another one by Pove. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I heard that he recently passed away. And I hope that's not true. Uh, but there's another artist that's passed away right on there. My fellow crewmate, Rec 127 up on top in the floater spot. And so now they're just chrome blank canvases as mentioned in the chat. And here you see a whole car by KR and foam. And right there you see that it's a white train right next to it. And so for me, this is some of the most beautiful works that you've seen on the trains ever. And then of course they went steel as was mentioned a, a moment earlier. And, and this is when myself and a lot of my crew were very, very active because we wanted to maintain the trains painted during our time painting, meaning do, during our generation. And so we attempted to paint as many trains as possible. For many, many years, we were not the only ones, but we definitely were prolific and committed but now, trains are like this, covered in advertising, which is almost like a slap in the face to the artists that have been painting trains for so long. Uh, and it's quite a shame. It looks amazing, but wouldn't it be much better if it said Lee? Wouldn't it be much better if it said Scene? Or Space, or some other thing? And so now, of course, these are trains that are hunted by riders to be painted over again. And it, is, and it is real, but it might have real panel pieces right over it. But what really caught my attention lately in the past few years 
is when the news started to really pay attention and the news the trains that we were seeing and so and they were catching social media and they were going viral so to speak so here we have a new story here we have another news story two dozen subway cars struck an overnight weekend graffiti storm and so here we have a very cool train you got Betty Boop with flames coming out of her eyes in the city uh, website whatever this thing is here we have another vandals cover subway car with graffiti on halloween and these artists were amazing because of course on halloween they did a very cool version of a dracula character and so who knows who they are, graffiti tourists or not. To me, it doesn't really matter where they're from. It's where they're at because they're painting the trains and keeping this tradition alive and with a considerable amount of risk. So let's get into it. So these trains are being paint, uh, painted truly incredible. And here we see a train yard uh, with a few whole cars and when you look down the lane it looks at least that there's three whole cars just sitting there uh, waiting to run in service but unfortunately a lot of these trains do not run in service and are cleaned immediately off of the, uh, the uh, you know by the workers in the train yard sometimes uh, the riders get lucky and they do run into service the first one does look like it's a uh, a bit of an abstract, you know, color, you know, palette kind of a, a piece. Uh, and so just so that you know, the first few images are mine. Uh, respect the architects who has an Instagram on here, has been following this trend and has an Instagram account that's dedicated to this uh, movement and in particular the clean trains in New York City. There are, other, there are other great accounts, and so we reached out, or I reached out to him to get some uh, some works and, and sort of get some of these images that have been sent to him or that he's found online and sort of gathered as a collection. And so let's just see some of these things that we're talking about here, including when they're running in service, Pretty incredible, if you ask me. It's it's a flashback for me growing up with that. And here you see another version. You see this in the yard. In the in the lane. And you know, now we have transit workers that appreciate this and that are documenting it, and as a result of Instagram and social media, they could share this with the world. And so we get to see these. And so they are crazy to witness in this manner because this is the first time they were seeing the footage from the actual workers that love this stuff and that appreciate these trains. So this is from 2020. I think it's pretty amazing that they're sharing this stuff with us. One more video here. right from the transit worker barn. And it does suck that they have to clean this immediately. And I'm very happy that we have footage of these and that it exists because for many decades, there's been no footage of these trains. Nothing has been saved. But now we're starting to get some of these trains at the very least documented and shared. Check that out. Characters, colors, their style, top to bottom. 
really incredible work. Check out this Pinocchio character. And on and on. This is at least five whole cars. It is an epic production. So much respect and shout out to the artists that painted those trains. Uh, it is truly, truly incredible work. An amazing amount of time goes into painting these trains. And so you see how they are here, fully covered. And then of course, this is how they end up being cleaned by workers scrubbed soap and water and and that's how they end up and so a question is why do they uh clean these off immediately it's because in 1989 the metropolitan transit authority the mta in new york city uh decided that they wanted to make a rule uh, to clean off immediately when they ran in service to dissuade riders from painting the trains. They wanted to prevent riders from getting uh, recognition, fame for painting trains. And so they went into a policy of zero tolerance. That's what happened. And so since 89, it's been like that. And if the trains are to run, it is because they weren't noticed by the workers that were pulling them out in service in the morning or they had to pull them in service to get to their you know, last stop. And so they would run for one trip alone. Uh, or you know, the other thing is too many trains got painted and so some of them had to run because they couldn't take anything out of service. And so it's a zero tolerance, po po a zero tolerance uh, policy that's existed for many years now that writers or artists uh, are still up against in cities like New York City. But let's get back into the photos so that you can see exactly uh, this amazing footage that we've uh, assembled here, thanks to Respect the Architects and all the photographers that have contributed and posted online, whether you're workers or artists or whoever is documenting this stuff, we are just thankful that they are documented in general. This train is in particular, a uh, particularly interesting one. It is completely covered black for Black Lives Matter. And it's a protest train, something that you don't see every day, very special. And here's another shot of it from the other angle on a platform somewhere. That's a lot of paint. And it's a very well executed, very fresh. Here's another car where you see a train on a train. And so I love that these cars are not only being painted, but they're being painted masterfully. These are writers and artists that know what they're doing. They've obviously found great places to paint and they are painting burners with amazing characters. And here you have a train on a train, this one with a meat cleaver, a bloody meat cleaver. He's cutting his way onto the train. Brickwork, I love that. Word up. Just so you can see it, I think I gotta see that one more time. Or maybe not. We'll keep it moving. And here you see another one from 2020. Protect the workers. And so what was happening in 2020? In 2020, we were under lockdown. COVID hit. And the world was uncertain. But the writers knew what time it was. And they took that to their advantage. And went to the train yards. And went to the layups. And painted these trains. Transit service was closed for many hours. And if I was in New York City, you better believe that I would be paying attention to the trains myself. And so COVID, although it's been terrible for everybody, it's been great for the riders. And so Gobble is a transit worker 
And so this is a, a memorial piece for a transit worker that passed. So rest in peace, Gobble. And here we see another train. Again, another train that is very colorful, you know, and almost reminiscent of what Futura did in 1980 with the brake train, which was a train free of any lettering and just using the train as a canvas to paint whatever he wants. And here you have a picture of the train in mid cleaning. And so you see they cleaned the bottom first and they're about to do the top in the transit barn. And so these are these sort of uh, never before seen shots Another rest in peace for Gobble, the transit worker that lost his life during COVID. Gobble died in a train fire is what I'm getting right here. And obviously he was loved. It is not a writer, it's a transit worker, but he got major love with multiple trains done in his honor. And here's another one, transit workers. A train honoring the transit workers that are out there. To the essential MTA workers who died because of COVID-19, says this train. And so sometimes people say riders don't have a heart. I'd have to differ and beg to differ uh, because it shows here that riders do have a heart and they are sharing their artwork and risking themselves and their freedom uh, to, for a rest to do these dedication trains. And all of these trains are done for free at great risk. And here you see the transit workers was not done by itself. It has a train next to it that says God. And here's a better shot of the God coming up. There it is. Beautiful. So the, this is what's going on on the trains. This is what's been happening. And so when people say, you know, and the authorities want to talk about crime and, and this art form being a crime and this being vandalism, this is not vandalism to me. This is art. I'm sure you all could disagree that this is art. This is even religious. Maybe this is a Christian. Maybe it's a Muslim. I don't know who painted this, but it's art nonetheless. Here's another shot of that whole car, multiple whole car. And these, again, these photos are epic. This is not photos that are normally taken by artists that are painting. These are photos from the train yard in the middle of the day. In the middle of the day, we would never have photos like this. We would rarely be so close to the trains in the middle of the day because you risk getting arrested. I mean, these might be police photos for all we know, but they're sharing them nonetheless. Maybe they're trying to troll uh, the artist to come out and comment on their own work. But I think the artists today are much smarter than that. More. Here we have another beautiful whole car. Colorful, gigantic. I'm not saying that the, the, that you're the troll, respect the architect. I'm saying that sometimes there might be accounts that do that. And so, you know, one of the things that's very important for all of us to remember and you know and especially for for the artists that are out there painting uh is that this is illegal they have now made it a felony uh they try to lie and ramp up the uh the charges and the the cleaning hours in order to make these felonies instead of just making them misdemeanors in order to ruin people's lives and so the police and the authorities especially the ones uh, from the transit authority are liars and cheaters and they'll go to no end 
to arrest the artists that paint these trains. And so we don't snitch here on anybody. We're not saying who these artists are, you know, and I'm not accusing anybody of doing that. But remember that these artists risk arrest and we don't want them to be arrested for doing this. And of course, the police use all kinds of underhanded tactics to arrest these artists. So that's that's what I'm talking about, you know? And we don't really care about the photo source. We care about the source. Uh, we care about these images being shared with the world. And so I'm thankful to be able to be sharing these today with you. And that's it, we'll get back into it. Don't shout out anybody on here. And so here we go, we're back into the colorful burners and to this uh, amazing Hocus Pocus car from 2020. And so this is a serious whole car. Burners, characters, detail, background. This is, this is, this is serious, this is this is hours worth of effort and planning to execute something as good as this. Here you see another angle of it. Masterfully done. I see an, uh, a request here for Jones World to be on here. Jones World, I don't know you, so I'm not shouting you out and getting you on here. Yeah, and, and we shout out Popo, which is why I'm saying it here, because they're watching too. So I want to let people know that, of course, all these channels are always monitored by police. And so we are not in the business of assisting in anybody getting incarcerated for their art. It's not what we do. And so... In this piece, this is a detail of that Hocus Pocus car. And I wanted to bring this piece out to be able to show the great detail in the work, in the color. It's, it's, it's beautiful. There's nothing else I can say about it. Look at that mushroom. It's crazy. Another car. This one says, I hate Instagram. For those that can't make it out. Another beautiful yard shot. Thanks to the workers or whoever generated this image. Ridiculous is right. This is a really great car. Simple and clean and funny as well. And here we have one, two, three, four, five whole car set assembled. This was all done in one shot, five connected whole cars for everybody to see. And from what I can remember, this made a storm uh, online because they sat in the J yard in Brooklyn for days on the outside. So everybody that passed on the J or the L train could see these as it went by. And this is king status for sure. This is maximum respect to these artists. This is either the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021. You have the, the rest in peace double K on top. The bad boy shit right underneath it. Another rest in peace. It's in memory of E-Rock and Cro-Mag underneath that underneath that I believe it says Rose and under believe that I believe it says Butch just great to see all together can you imagine seeing these in person running in front in front of you I want to be there for that And Double K of People Under the Stairs. So there we know it's a hip hop connection. Big up Double K from People Under the Stairs. And big up to Kez 5. This is a memorial tribute to King Kez 5 or Kang Kaz 5. YKK, XTC, KMS. 
it's great to see these tributes. And so we're going to focus on some of these tributes here for a moment, because what better way to honor these legendary riders than to paint a tribute train for them? It's a beautiful way to honor these riders. This is a phase two. Great way to honor this king, this legend. And so many memorials were painted for many riders. This one's a little bit older from 2019 when he first passed, but I had to share it so that we can remember true mathematics phase two. This is one for Nick 707, rest in peace. Who Nick unfortunately passed away from COVID up in the BX in the Bronx. So we remember Nick was a really good dude, just like FaZe. Pioneers in this game, in this art movement. This is not a memorial, but I wanted to show this just for the Mickey Mouse. You saw the Mickey Mouse earlier, excuse me, earlier with uh, Lee and the Fabulous Five. And so we hope we can bring it back. And so there's a conversation that's happening across history right here with this train. And a Sane rest in peace for my brother Sane, XTC, AW, RIS crew. Beautiful car painted for him. It looks like he would have painted this himself, just like he would have done it. And he was painting clean trains before he passed. I painted them with him. This is a good brother, so it's a beautiful tribute to a missed member of our community. And another brother, is the Wiz TMB RIS RTW rest in peace is the Wiz looks like he painted it himself and I love that is the Wiz still lives among us he's never to be forgotten just like the other brothers that I mentioned earlier DMX, rest in peace. A lot of DMX fans, including myself out there. And here you see one DMX tribute. And here you see another DMX tribute. And yet another DMX tribute. Big up DMX. And now back to these whole cars, whole car madness. This is a monster whole car in every sense of the word. Look at this car right here. I mean, this is, you might as well have worked for transit to do this. This is next level. This whole car has at least three characters in it. And we're gonna get into some detail shots of this car. This should have ran. They should have let this run just for the sake of letting great art run. Look at this Frankenstein monster. I mean, this looks better than those advertising trains all day long. And here's another section of that train, the werewolf creature. Look at that. The other side, Frankenstein's bride, the bride of Frankenstein. Look at that detail shot. Look at that. It's just the way that it's painted in greens. Classic, classic, classic and beautiful. More whole 
cars here. Just to bring it back, we saw this clip earlier. I'll play it again. Walking in the yard, seeing the whole cars. How do they even do it? They've got to be some ninjas. They got to know how to paint fast. We're not shouting out any of the artists at all. We're protecting their identity. We don't do that. But we are down to show the art. If you know who they are, keep it to yourself. And this is one side of a, of a double hole train. And if you know what that is, that's a lot of spray paint, a double sided train. Check this out. This almost looks like you're in, you're in uh, Puerto Rico. You have a total landscape scene painted. And so if you follow the comments on here, you'll see a lot of the information about uh, some of the trains that are next to it or behind it from respect to architects, which is the source of this information. And it's just truly beautiful. And so, you know, once again, everybody, my name is Alan Kett. We're looking at the wave of clean trains that have been painted in New York City in the past two years. It's a phenomenon and an art movement that I love. And we're here celebrating today and showing some of these photos that most people have not seen. It, real insider shots from workers and rail fans and graffiti fans and writing fans. Uh, and so we do this because we believe in this art form and we believe in its preservation and we believe in sharing that. And so, uh, again, my name is Alan Kett. That's the work that we're doing here today. And so let's get back into it. Thank you, everybody, for, for actually thank you, everybody who so far contributed and purchased a badge today. It helps us out tremendously. You wouldn't believe it, but it really does. And so here we go. We're back in Puerto Rico on this car. And here we have MULs. One of my favorites. And simply because these cats paint that much. For those of you that know, you know. And here we have a whole train. I love this image because you see all 10 cars are covered with top to bottom pieces. This is, this is another level. This is serious planning. This is serious teamwork. This is how it's done. quick, efficient, whole cars. You see them here, no nonsense, covering up the trains, big and bold, get in and get out. Another favorite right here, fight the power, simple, a few colors, efficient, complete, and a good statement. Who doesn't love this? I could think of a few people, but most of us would disagree. Another beauty right here, a panel piece. We've been showing so many whole cars. We haven't shown panel pieces, but there are just as many panel pieces or if not more painted every week and here's one of them clean style another one right here 
Great shot by the workers. Clean block style. Got some cool characters in the middle. Let's see, I think there's another shot of it. You can see it right there. Just pan on this for a minute so you can see the detail work that goes into this. These are not unskilled vandals. These are gifted artists right here that are doing this work. Here's a cool little video that I think you'll enjoy. incredible that is incredible soundtrack and all we're back in 77 with that one that is incredible footage from the booth inside the train yard back to the panels and back to these beautifully painted trains The Grim Reaper. Check that out. Uh oh, what's this? Is this another video? <laughs> Just incredible footage to come across and to have. Another great car, Showtime. These are not wrapped vinyl advertising. This is spray paint on steel. Look at this, two whole cars, beautifully done. Another beautifully executed car. This one is literally smoking, cigarette and all. Look at this revolver. Is the Pinocchio that we saw earlier. Just killer trains. Could this be more footage? This might be another video.
so good. And this is an acne. Rest in peace to acne. KMS crew. Remember him. Good dude right there. It's great to see these tributes to these writers that are no longer with us, but that contributed a lot to this movement, to this art form. Another killer car. Great character, great, great character work. Great style. And this Godzilla smashing the trains. I mean, for those of you out there that have ever painted trains or painted period you know what it takes to paint something like this. It takes a lot of work, it takes time. Totally insane. Another car. This one doesn't quite seem complete. This is one of the few that we've seen that are incomplete. And here is another car from that same run. This is the car next to it. And complete Sylvester the Cat right there. The letters got done though. And here is a complete car. We got Snoopy in effect. Beautiful car. This is a detail of a car that says, I believe not in service. So again, humorous, they got jokes. Love to see it. Window down. Another great car right here. Is Subway Graffiti coming back, someone asked. I'd say it's fully back by the look of these photos. I'd say it's back everywhere. Riders in every city are painting trains. Whether we see them or not is a different story. Here's the other side of that car. Beautiful. I love that it says VIM. Big up to VIM crew. You know who you are. Check this car out. We saw it earlier with the footage. like a Picasso meets Riders right here, this Guernica car. Next level status. The other side. One more right here. So that's it for today, folks. That's that's the presentation. Those are the trains that were selected for this discussion. Uh, we wanted to share 
a, a well-rounded presentation or selection of all these great train cars that have been painted for the past two years. And there are hundreds, if not thousands more. Uh, that's just a small selection of what uh, has been painted and what's been documented. I, uh, you know, suggest you guys that are interested in this to, uh, you know, search online. Uh, this talk will be saved. It will be saved right here on the Museum of Graffiti's Instagram page and on IGTV. Later on, it will be on YouTube. And so you guys could go back and look at this again. Um, and we have a few minutes. And so if anybody has any questions, hit me. Let me know what's up. Uh, for everybody who has uh, donated a badge today, Brimstone, uh, Kern Myrtle, uh, everybody else out there, thank you so much for your donation. Tens, thank you very much. Uh, much uh, love to you guys for doing that. And uh, let's see, there's a question in here from Cool Keep Six. He says, for those of you who are around back in the days, how much work is being done now in comparison to back in the days? It's, it's hard to tell how much because back in the days, these trains were running and so you'd see it and there were thousands of trains running in, or hundreds of trains running in service every day. And, you know, dozens if not hundreds of trains being painted every week and so i don't think that it meets the volume that it was in the 70s or the 80s uh, there were so many writers so many hundreds of writers painting trains daily pretty much in new york city and so i think it's uh, less today than it is back then uh, probably much more people painting the streets than are painting the trains but there are a serious a uh, bunch of committed writers judging from these photos. I don't know how many they are, a hundred? Who knows, doesn't even matter to me. But what matters to me is that they don't get caught, that they keep doing what they're doing, and that others that want to paint, just do it. But, uh, you know, really, I think it's uh, it's very impressive that they're doing this today when the laws are stricter than ever before and and that they don't even run uh, hardly at all. And so these are really dedicated people that are trying to keep the train painting movement alive. And so big up to them. So another question, what do you think is the biggest difference between back in the day to what's going on with the trains now? Biggest difference is back then they would run uh, there would there were times in the history in New York City where they would only run for one day and Tat's crew, uh, TAT, lost a lot of trains during that period that they only ran maybe once or twice and they were gone. But the biggest difference was the zero tolerance policy that exists today versus back in the day. Question to me, will you do another subway again? Definitely not. Uh, and if I would, I wouldn't talk about it. So... That's kind of how that goes. Uh, any other questions out there in the audience? No? Well, for me, you know, for me, you know, I think, I think painting trains is beautiful. But I think that when you paint trains, you run a considerable risk uh, of incarceration. And, and I know that personally because the police came after me in 2006, 2007, and I had a big legal case. And so that was no fun. Uh, and they really try to destroy you and use uh, underhanded tactics. And uh, I don't think anybody should, should go through that. And so those of you out there that are doing it, be careful. Be careful. It's really, um, it's really serious. They, t they treat it very seriously. Another question. I wonder if there are any uh, crackdowns on workers who are taking photos from the yards. I hope not. Um, another question, what was it like to transition from a writer to the founder of a museum? It's been a long transition. You know, I was very active in the late 80s and the early 90s, which was a very, very long time ago. And so I've been working for a very long time doing all kinds of things on the periphery of writing to get to where I'm at today. So it's been a long journey, 
but I'm glad to be here to do the work that I'm doing today. Another question. Uh, it will be on YouTube, yes. Uh, someone's asking, we need a pop-up exhibition in the Bay. I'd love to do it. Let's see if we can get that going. Uh, how do you feel about the lack of style sometimes on the trains now? Well, I think that you know one of the things that you have to consider is the shorter amount of time that's allotted to painting these trains and then what writers must do to cover the space. At one point when I was painting trains uh, in the early 90s, we refused to do any pieces on the trains and we only did insides or we only did throw ups to cover more space as we were waging a, a war on the MTA to get the trains to run. And so a lot of this is very strategic to get the trains to run, to complete, to cover space. And so the, the idea is not sometimes about style for everybody, it's about volume and getting it done. And so there's all different kind of tactics that people em, uh, employ in reaching their goals. Another question, which years were the buff the strongest? I don't know, but it's pretty strong right now. Um, and yeah, we've seen lots of style today, that's for sure. Did the pandemic hurt or help the movement? I've got to say that the pandemic helped with cutting the service of the trains and perhaps allowing more riders to, to paint trains that weren't painting as many trains as before. And maybe the, the enforcement loosened up a little bit and there were other things to consider. But at the same time, uh, we lost some riders to uh, COVID, which is unfortunate. Most recently, I believe was Miko, old school Miko from the ex Vandals crew from Brooklyn lost his life. So uh, rest in peace to, to Miko and condolences to his family. And so with that said, uh, everybody, thank you. My name is Alan Kett. You've been with me here at the Museum of Graffiti and we bring these discussions to celebrate this art movement, to celebrate the writers of this culture and their accomplishments and to bring our community together. Uh, please come and visit us if you make it down to Miami. Check us out online. All these art talks are saved on our Instagram account and then they are reposted on our YouTube account. There are over 150 of these art talks archived from artists and writers from all over the world. Peace to everybody who's joined us. Thank you everybody who donated today. Thursday, we have Brimstone back doing the interview duties. So please join us 7 p.m. this Thursday. Thank you, respect the architects for the images. And Mo from Jamaica, Queens, big up to you. I see you. Um, size, what up? Metaphor, what up? Flip, what up? Thank you for the cap. George, what's going on? Miser, everybody out there, gasp. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace.